Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, delighted as always. Dan, Raphael, it's been a minute. Normally we're every week. This has been a, this is like three weeks since I've spoke to you. How's things? Things are good, man. It's been busy. Yeah, well, I'm glad you've been busy, mate, because it's a lot going on in this boxing world and a huge, huge fight is happening in Brooklyn. I was going to say New York City, but Brooklyn. Is, that, is Brooklyn New York City? Yeah, Brooklyn is part of New York City, absolutely. All right, okay. I, I didn't know if it was so like... I don't know, two different it, uh, I'll, I'll educate my British friends. It's called a borough. You got in, in the city of New York, it's New York, it's Manhattan, which is what most people think of as New York City. Mm, yeah. Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Staten Island. That makes up New York City. Gotcha. So the five boroughs, Staten Island. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, now when I, I'm I know it Brooklyn. well. My parents are both from Brooklyn. So. All right. So you're go are you going home this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. But yeah, like I say, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, um, I'm excited for this fight. I, I, like, not just because you've got two class, very, very talented fighters on the bill, but this whole build up has been surreal in itself. Um, I seen the face off to, earlier today. I don't know if it was on top of the Empire State Building and one of the buildings in New York. Um, and there was a push and a shove in with Haney and, and Garcia going at it again. Before we talk about the fight itself, Dan, just talk to you about this this crazy buildup that we've witnessed over the past seven, eight weeks. I've been really disappointed with it, to be honest with you. I have not been attracted to the buildup in this fight whatsoever. Uh, it's actually kind of disgusted me. Not to do anything whatsoever with Devin Haney, who has handled himself like the pro, like he normally does, but the, the wild antics and the concerning behavior of Ryan Garcia, to be honest with you, has really turned me off on the fight. I mean, I'm sure, you know, I'm still going to watch the fight, of course. We're going to write about the fight. But uh, my enthusiasm for it at this moment compared to what it was when there was the prospect of it actually being made is definitely much less than it was. I mean, you know, I see one fighter in, in – uh, and I'm a big Ryan Garcia fan. I've known the kid for a long time. I like him. I, I worry about him as a, as a person. And so I'm, I'm really watching, you know, like it feels like a slow-moving train wreck as you watch this fight. Uh, you know, get towards uh, fight night. You have Devin Haney, a supreme champion, a top fighter, a pound-for-pound -pound kind of guy, going about his business, great, great condition, very obviously. All you could do is look at the video for 12 seconds. You'll know mm -hmm. he's in tremendous shape, as he always is, taking it serious. And I'm not sure I can say the same thing about Ryan Garcia, and I don't think this is all an act or he's trolling or this and that. I mean, somebody needs to take his phone away for five minutes. It's nothing but social media. It, like, feels like 24 hours a day with some of the wildest shit you've ever seen. So um, I hope we get a good fight. I mean, honestly, I don't think it's been a very good promotion. Um, they, they priced the tickets in Brooklyn at such a ridiculous, obscene amount of money is crazy to me. Uh, they didn't put anybody that's related to the New York market on the undercard. Now, Ryan Garcia and, and, and Haney have their own fan base, obviously, and they both have fans that extend beyond where they're from. But they've never fought in terms of main event fights in the East Coast in New York City. Uh, and so that's this their first time. And they, they priced the tickets in a manner which makes it very complicated for a lot of people to see it. And then typically in New York, what, what promoters do to, to make sure there's a good crowd is you, you, you go to the talent pool in the tri-state area, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, and you put on some of those fighters that are going to be able to bring some people to the show. If you take a look at the card that they've done, Obviously, you got a top-notch main event, but the undercard has literally not one fighter that's remotely related to the area other than one of the non-pay-per-view fights with Sergey Devrinchenko, who is a Brooklyn-based guy, not from there. Maybe he'll bring a few people, but he's not a big star. He's a heck of a fighter, but not a big name. So they've done a, a big swing and a miss, in my opinion, on the way they structured the card for the market that they're doing the fight in. Uh, and it's really not that good of an undercard on top. It's not like they're putting on these top, top level fights for that undercard and their must see kinds of fights. They're just sort of pedestrian fights uh, in a market that they don't belong in. So I completely disagree with you about the merit of this promotion. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what happens in terms of, will there be a good walk-up crowd, how the pay-per-view will wind up performing? You know, I do suspect it will do okay because Ryan Garcia obviously has a very big fan base and uh, Tank, uh, you know, the Tank Davis fight did huge numbers and, and Devin Haney is such a superior talent and it has been building his name in some higher profile fights against Pro Gray, against Lomachenko, going to Australia twice against Cambosis. 
So, you know, for their sake, I hope it's successful. I'm not hating on the on anybody, you know, making money and putting on a big event. I just feel like it was uh, in some ways mishandled. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I think uh, with the promotional side of things, we've only ever seen the social media side of things from um, Ryan Garcia and little snippets from Devin Haney. Other than that, I've not really seen much. But Ryan Garcia, like you said, he's, he's he has gone... I don't know what word I would choose here, but he has gone... Well, he's been on social media a lot, and you you alluded to the fact that somebody needs to take his phone away. Now, three, four weeks ago, a lot of guys, including Eddie Hearn, was worried about his mental health. Um, Absolutely. Are you Absolutely. worried about his mental health? Percent. And I say that because he's a person who has discussed his mental health in the past in great detail. I, I have done interviews with him about that extensively. And, uh, you know, he's had his issues. There's no doubt about it. And I, I wish nothing but the best for him. I want him to be well. Uh, and doesn't it doesn't really uh, make you feel good about that situation when you look at the types. It's one thing to be on social media, which I don't necessarily think is a good thing to be on social media all the time when you got a huge fight coming up. I mean, I'm not saying you should never do it, but it's so to the excess that you kind of like scratch your head like, what are you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. But be yeah. that as it may, it's the things that he's posting on social media. It'd be one thing if he was putting up all these videos and, and comments about his, his, his training, his preparation, or just the normal things, but he's, he's doing sort of outlandish things, supporting of various conspiracy theories, just wild, wild shit that, it, you know, you it makes you wonder, like, are you sure the guy's taking the fight seriously? That's why I think it's turned a lot of people off. What is the mood right now in America for this fight? I know that in the, in the UK, it's... There's well, no mood for America in this fight. Nobody knows about this fight. It's really? a boxing only fight. This, I mean, Ryan Garcia's diehard Instagram people probably know about the fight. But this is not a mainstream fight in the sense of the media. This is not, I mean, I'm not, look, a lot of boxing matches that are great matchups on paper don't get mainstream attention. But the biggest ones do. You know, when Tyson Fury was fighting Deontay Wilder, you know, when Canelo Alvarez fights, when when uh, when those types of fights were taking place, you know, they do get their 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 uh, their share of, of mainstream press in this country. And uh, this fight, to my knowledge, hasn't really received that at all. Because I know in America you do have a lot of the talking heads. You have Sports Center, First Take, all those sort of shows out there. And they are not talking about this fight on those shows right now. Oh, really? They may have talked about it a little bit when the fight was made, and I guess it's possible that in the next few days there might be a little bit because they're in New York, and and that obviously is a huge media market, the biggest in the country, one of the biggest in the world. But in the in the weeks leading up to it, it's been uh, very very little. To the fight itself, I mean, we've just seen the head-to-head -head there, the the first head-to-head -head this fight week with Ryan Garcia. I don't know if you've seen it, Dan, and Ryan Garcia's got his shirt off and he's up in Devin's face and then Devin's pushed him and caused a little bit of a ruckus. Um, we, we, we tend to see that a lot when it comes to fight week, when fighters are making weight. So the fight itself, is this a competitive fight or is this just a clear favourite in this one? Well, first of all, as it relates to the making of the weight, that I don't think is an issue at all in this fight. Maybe it was when these guys were in the lighter, in the lighter weights, mm -hmm. but Haney has moved up from 135. He's, I'm sure, much more comfortable at 140. You can just tell by the condition if you look at the photos or the videos. And, and Ryan Garcia is also a guy that had moved up in weight. And, uh, you know, he was the one that was very – he took the fight, so credit to him, but he was weight drained because of the rehydration clause in his fight against Tank Davis. And uh, so him for making him making 140 shouldn't really be any kind of particular issue mm -hmm. based on how they've been performing. So whatever whatever uh, uh, stuff was going on at the at the head to head that you mentioned, I don't think is a matter of being uh, uh, related to their weight making. What was your other your other question about that? Uh, is, oh, this not, a, is this still a competitive fight? Well, you say that, is it still a competitive fight? That 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 makes you say was it was it in the minds of some was it ever a competitive fight? Look, Ryan Garcia is a tremendous athlete from the standpoint of he's got great quickness with his feet and his hands. His hands are among the fastest in the sport. He's got a crushing left hook. He's definitely got punching power, obviously. Uh, Devin Haney is, uh, in my opinion, tremendous on defense. Not a big puncher, but he can keep you honest. I mean, I've seen him knock some guys out spectacularly. He doesn't have a ton of knockouts, obviously, but I wouldn't uh, want to take a free shot from him. I'll put it to you like that. Um, so in the power department, you got to give the edge to, to Ryan Garcia. In the speed department, you might even give the slight edge to Garcia in the speed department. But in overall fundamentals, in overall IQ, in overall execution, in overall in terms of the level of opponent, I have to give that credit to uh, to Devin Haney. He's getting the job done 
and he's doing it impressively. He's not just winning his fights. He's shutting guys out. I mean, he won the title against Regis Program, who was like number two in the wealth in the junior welterweight division at worst. Mm. Um, and he didn't just win. He won uh, by a shutout and also scored a knockdown. Uh, that's not the way that Ryan Garcia is winning his fights against fighters that are not on the same level as Regis Program. So while I hope it's a competitive fight, I think it's very difficult to look at it, particularly with all the things that Ryan's been doing in the lead up to the fight, to think that he's going to win the fight. So he's the big underdog, as he should be. Devin Haney's put a post out saying, listen, meet me in the middle of the ring. Um, but I, can we take that with a pinch of salt? Can you uh, see Devin Haney standing in the middle of the ring and going toe-to-toe with Ryan Garcia? I can see him going to the middle of the ring and using his defense and moving his head and moving his shoulders and giving him angles and slipping away. But he's not going to sit there and punch it out in a brawl. He's a very smart fighter. He's not stupid. You know, anybody that's going to stand in the middle of the ring and, and uh, get into a punch for punch with Ryan Garcia is taking, uh, uh, you know, the outcome of the fight into their own hands because that's a hard way to go because he can punch. That's one of the one of the best attributes that Ryan Garcia possesses. I would never underestimate his power. But uh, I think that Devin Haney is way, way too, of an, too intelligent of a fighter to get dragged into that nonsense. So, might he go to the center of the ring? Absolutely. But he's going to box and he's going to move and he's going to use a jab. And he's going to use a, use a speed and he's going to use the science. He's going to, and he's if, if he's going to win, you know, he's going to whip him like that. For the winner, Dan, when, well, when I look at that 140 pound division, I could probably argue for a case it being the, probably the most stacked division, exciting division right now in world boxing. When you've got the, like the Ryan Garcia, the Devin Haynes, the Teofimo Lopez, uh, Sabriel Matias, Isaac Cruz, Josh Taylor, Jack Carter over here in the UK, Richard and Hitchin, Hitchens, who won a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I believe. Um, so we've got some very, very talented stacked division. You, ten guys there that could easily be world champions. So for that, so let's say if Devin Haney wins, does he go mm -hmm. after the Teofimo Lopez, Sabriel Matias, Leon Paro winner? Where does he go after this fight? Well, I, first of all, I agree with you about your assessment of the division. It's a great division. It's a lot of fun fights you can make in that division, mix and match those guys. We'll all make interesting matchups. Um, you know, another guy that's, that you didn't mention, I, I'm mentioning him because he's on the undercard. That's uh, Arnold Barbosa, who's a weight class. I mean, that's another name. So, I mean, it goes very, very deep is the point. Um, what Haney might do after this fight, if he is the winner, that's a very good question. I mean, there will be opportunity. I, he, To my knowledge, he's not in a long-term contract with Matchroom, even though they work together, so he can kind of maybe still work with Eddie, but still kind of call his shots where he wants to go. I know he'd love to fight Tank Davis, who mm -hmm. has fought. He's not in the 140-pound weight class officially, but he's fought in that weight class once before, and he certainly can move up to that division if he chooses to and uh, and bring, uh, you know, a big fight to you know for anybody. So that's the fight that Devin has mentioned about something he would love to have. Um, but I think, yeah, if you're a boxing fan, you'd love to see the Tia Fimo fight. You'd love to see any of those matchups that you mentioned. Sabriel Matias, um, you know, who's now with matchroom boxing. Obviously, he's got the fight you mentioned against Paro. Uh, so, you know, I guess anything is possible. I haven't heard, like, them talking about one specific thing they're looking at. Obviously, they're paying attention to what they have coming up on Saturday with Ryan Garcia, which you, uh, you know, even if he's the favorite, I don't I think you can take that as a you know, take for granted, let's say, a victory because, uh, you know, you still got to deal with the matchups coming up. But there's going to be a lot of opportunity for Haney. He's a pound for pound guy. He's got you know one of the titles, and uh, if he wins, it's just going to be another. I would imagine another big fight. Because one thing I love about Haney, and it's similar. One of the other things I love about Ryan Garcia is both these guys are willing to fight the best fighters. Neither one of them is looking to duck and get away from anybody. Mm, I think that's probably the same sort of answer for Ryan Garcia if he wins. Then because I think that he's the type of guy that will. I guess again you alluded to it as well with Devin Haney. They, they don't say no to anybody. Do you know what I mean? They're willing to fight. The guys in front of them, obviously, the deal's got to be right. You know, you say the business side of boxing, Dan, it's got to be right for these guys because they're earning well up there in them seven figures. And um, so the, the business deal for both Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney has got to be right. But I can see them fighting the guys that you mentioned, the the, the Isaac Cruz. I know he's been talked about by fighting as well. Um, you've got the, the Teofimo Lopez, who's still there or thereabouts, and he he's not been mentioned at all by fighting these guys. It's always been the. I know Isaac Cruz has been mentioned. You mentioned Tank Davis, but Teofimo Lopez, where's he right now in this whole situation? Well, he's got, he, first of all, he's the champ. He's the windmill mm -hmm. champion. Don't forget that. He beat mm -hmm. Josh Taylor. He's also the WBO champion. Now, granted, his fight that he had recently against Jermaine Ortiz was not exactly a memorable matchup. Um, it was a fight that a lot of people thought that Jermaine Ortiz deserved to win, as terrible as the fight was. Uh, but Teofimo will be back this summer. He's got a fight coming up in, uh, I believe it's in June 
uh, and he will be fighting. And uh, after that, we'll see what happens. He's going to fight Steve Claggett, uh, a mm-hmm. Canadian uh, sort of fringe contender. Uh, they had given uh, the team of uh, Tifimo Lopez. Uh, I report, I don't remember all of the names, but it was four different guys that were, were offered. Uh, and, and he went with uh, the Claggett fight. Um, hopefully, if, he'll t- if he takes care of that fight this summer, he'll, he'll be back, I would imagine, a much bigger fight from this fall. Uh, by the way, in terms of the 140-pound division, I just thought of another guy we didn't mention, and he's got the fight coming up next week, and that's uh, Jose Ramirez. Uh, you know, in a, you know, he's with Golden Boy yeah. now in his, his debut uh, fight against Francis Barthelme. So, you know, we just keep coming up with names in the 140-pound weight class. It's, it's a great division. It really, really is, and I think because we've just, I said that you could make an argument, but I'm going to make the argument. It's the best division in boxing right now. How's that? Yeah, I, I think <laughs> you're probably right about that. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely the amount of guys who are interesting, who can mix and match, and who make good fights. I mean, you put it all into the big pot there, and you can mix it around and uh, pull out any two guys and make something that you'd be wanting to watch. Can we jump up uh, one division? Sure. You know what I'm going with it. Eddie Hearn has signed probably. I, I, it's going to be a start in, in, in world boxing, I believe, and definitely going to be up there in that pound for pound list in the near future. If he isn't going to be in the next few months, who knows? Is Jerome Ennis. Um, kept it quiet, Eddie. Normally that we can hear whispers. On, I mean, your friend Coppinger normally has sources and he'll leak the, the breaking news, but there was no leaks from nobody. And it caught me by surprise. Uh, did it catch you by surprise? I mean, I didn't necessarily expect it on the day that it happened, but I have to be honest, I wasn't shocked by that at all. I wasn't really shocked at all by that because he he had just settled his lawsuit with his official promoter, Now Boxing. That was the company that was owned by Cameron Duncan, who recently passed away, and the company was left to his, uh, you know, his widow, who's not an experienced boxing person. They were way behind on, uh, on the fights that they owed him. He had sued for breach of contract, and they had reached a settlement with the estate and with the widow. And so it didn't surprise me because even though he's been boxing on PBC cards, he's never been signed to PBC. He's never been signed to PGD Promotions, which is the promoter that promotes all of the, the uh, PBC cards. The reason why he was on those cards was because he was signed directly to Showtime. Mm-hmm. Once Showtime mm-hmm. exited boxing at the end of 2023, to me it was inevitable that if he didn't sign with PGB, that he would end up elsewhere. Now that could have been natural. It could have been top rank, Golden Boy, you know, whoever. Um, but I had heard before the, the Eddie Hearn deal was announced that uh, whatever discussions were going on with TGB and PBC were not going very well. Mm. And Eddie mm. has been shouting the praises of Jerron Ennis, rightfully so, for quite a while. And everybody in the business knew that Eddie would love nothing more than to sign Jerron Ennis if he was available. And that's what he ended up doing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't necessarily thinking I was going to you know, get up that morning and see that Eddie had signed the kid. But uh, I can't say it was a total shock to me. And uh, you know what? And I wrote a piece about this on my newsletter on my Substack, uh, Fight Freaks Unite. Link where, at the bottom of the description. I'll let the little shout. The link will be at the bottom uh, of the video. <laughs> where I wrote that this was, in my mind, this was a great match of fighter and promoter because Eddie is is a top promoter, obviously, and he can bring attention and and uh, get get uh, all kinds of people talking about his guys, and he'll shout their names about from the rooftops. I was joking with somebody that he's going to have. Jerron Boots Ennis, he's going to have him fighting Terrence Crawford. He's going to have him fighting, you know, all the top guys. You know, before you know it, he's going to have him, you know, fighting against Sugar Ray Leonard or something like that. Uh, and Boots Ennis was in a position where he needed a top promoter because nobody has ever lifted a finger to really promote his his career. Uh, you know, PBC and TGB did a good job of matching him up and doing fights with him, but they had no vested interest in him. So I'm not, I'm not blaming them in any way, but there was no reason for them to go out of their way to really you know, get on that Boots bandwagon because they had no interest in him as far as officially being the promoter. Now, with, with Eddie having him and knowing how to move a guy, it's, it, I think it's going to be a great thing for both sides because Eddie can use, uh, you know, having a, a deeper stable. You know, he's building up with, you know, he likes to keep his guys, top guys in Britain, top guys in America. Now he gets one of the best young fighters in the United States and the world, frankly. Um, so he beefs up that part of his, you know, United States uh, dates and, and whatever he's going to do here. And like I said, Boots desperately needs somebody to advocate for him, to get him out there, to put on events for him, to bring him home to Philadelphia. It is absolutely ridiculous that Jerron Boots Ennis has not fought but a couple of times since he's been at this level in his home 
uh, in his home area. A couple times in Atlantic City on smaller shows. Uh, I, I couldn't even tell you the last time he fought in Philadelphia. Certainly not off the top of my head on a televised fight. I think the summer fight that he's going to have, whoever it's going to be against, be it the mandatory or somebody else if the mandatory uh, Cody Crowley fight doesn't get made. Uh, but you can be you you'd be betting uh, good money probably that Eddie will take him home to Philadelphia, perhaps Atlantic City, which is only you know half an hour away, and uh, they're going to make hay there. They're going to make some noise. Well, I spoke to Eddie last week in Manchester, England, and um, he said that he wants to take Butch to Philadelphia. He's got this mandatory challenge. I think a purse bid's coming up. Is it Cody Crowley? I think his mandatory yeah. challenge is going to be for this. Well, what happened with that is they had made a deal because Crowley is a PBC guy. Mm. They had cl- they had told the IBF they have a deal and they canceled the purse bid. Then within a few days after that, I guess it was, is when, when Natru signed Ennis. And so the deal that was made for that fight was no longer going to work. Uh, and so now it's going to go back. The IBF said to me, it's going to go back to a purse bid coming up next week. And so we'll mm. see you know what the outcome of that is. Obviously, Eddie is in a position as the promoter of the champion, which you, you get a much larger share of the money. Uh, you're in a better position to win the purse bid because he also can make a deal with with Ennis, whatever the purse bid is, to what your purse is going to be, and therefore bid enough to make sure you get the other guy to come to the fight. So uh, if it does go to a purse bid, it, it clearly Eddie Hearn should win the purse bid. Mm. And it's like I said, you, you said it was criminal that, or to, again, that he hadn't fought in Philadelphia, but I think Eddie's own words was, Taking boots back to Philadelphia, um, but we and know you don't have, they're not going to put him in like the big gigantic arena. But mm. there's some smaller venues, but still quality arenas. Like the the one uh, that springs to my mind that would seem logical. There's a place called the Leah Porter Center, which is on the campus of Temple University. Holds probably uh, you know ten or twelve thousand. Uh, it's where their uh, basketball team has played. I've covered fights there several times over the years. Perfect facility. It's in the city area and. and you can bring in a good crowd, and uh, that seems to be like the very logical place. And if you do well there, you know, and you can bring a super fight, you then can build them up into a, you know, one of the bigger arenas where they have like the uh, NBA team or the NHL team, or take them to Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, which is again very close by, and make a big fight. You know, I think maybe eventually, I'm not sure if this is next or you know later in the contract. It wouldn't shock me if we see Boots Ennis fighting against Connor Ben at some point. Well, again, I did ask. Eddie Hearn that, and he did say that that would be a huge fight in the UK, so it'll be bringing boots to the UK. Um, Dan, uh, well, the problem with that though is, but Ennis is, I mean, uh, uh, Connor Ben doesn't have a oh. license, in, so maybe he'd have to come here to do the fight, in which it would still probably be a pay per view in the UK on uh, on the zone. Definitely, I agree. For for boots, Ennis though, from being from Philadelphia now, Philadelphia has always been a, a fighting city, a good boxing city. Um, you can probably rattle off names that you know that have been great fighters. Bernard Hopkins comes to mind straight off the bat. Um, so what I would I heard of somebody from Joe Frazier? Yeah, see what I mean? They, I knew you would. I knew you would give me some more names, Dan. That's why you're the boxing encyclopedia. Um, <laughs> what would it mean for that city to to get a a, a a star like Butch Ennis to come home and to build up to maybe that big stadium fight? Because like I said to you. He, Canelo's in his mid thirty, well, in his thirties. Crawford's in his thirties. Joshua Tyson Fury, all these guys are in their thirties. Devin Haney, Butch Ennis, they're the guys that come to mind right off the bat that can fill that void for that pound for pound superstar type fighter. Do you agree with that? Well, I mean, look, I think Butch Ennis has got as much potential to be a star as anybody in the business, no question. But you got to see him do it first. He still hasn't had a real serious fight against a real top guy and, and, and been able to fight in a, in a high profile event ever. So I'm not going to anoint anybody just yet. Show me. And then I'll let you know what I think. Now that said, he definitely has that potential. It's going to be up to, to him to, to continue to do what he does with his come in great shape and put on, uh, you know, uh, do what he does in the ring. And it's going to be up to match room and Eddie to make the right matches for him, to get the right names for him, to put him in a position to be successful. Because as as tremendous of a talent as he is, it's not all peaches and cream. I mean, I was there ringside when he fought Chikadze and for the interim title, and he won 12 out of 12 rounds, and it was one of the worst fights I ever saw. And he just had a, you know, I mean, it's hard to say he had a bad night when he won every round, but he didn't look good in that fight, and he'd be the first to admit it. Mm. What would it mean for the city, though, for that, that Philadelphia, a good fighting city like Philadelphia to have – a guy like that to come home and sell out like a, like a, I don't know, maybe a stadium out there in Philadelphia. What would yeah. it mean to say? 
I mean, it would be a big deal. But, you know, the thing about Philly in recent years, is even when, like, Bernard Hopkins, you know, was one of the greatest fighters of, of modern times, even when he was going strong and he had hometown fights, he didn't do huge crowds in Philadelphia. Uh, Danny Garcia is a, is a Philadelphia fighter who was a top star and a top champion in the, in the junior welterweight, later the welterweight division. You know, he didn't have big-time fights in Philadelphia. So even though it has the great history, and maybe they can repeat it at some point, uh, I don't know if that's where he has his biggest fights. He's probably destined, if he's going to have those types of fights, probably going to wind up in Atlantic City. Do you know the difference between uh, Hopkins and Garcia? They didn't have Eddie Hearn. <laughs> well, you, no offense to Eddie Hearn, but Bernard Hopkins, he had a <laughs> king in those fights. That's a pretty big name in terms of Definitely. promotion. And, and 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 Danny Garcia had Oscar De La Hoya for a long time in his career. So nothing against Eddie, but they they both had good promoters. I was uh, I was they, tongue it was tongue in cheek there, Dan. I know they were great 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 promoters. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now I do want to go to the jump over across the pond to to London. Um, yesterday. Now I know you're you're a boxing nut, so I'm I'm, I'm guessing you would have saw that. The Bevel versus Bert to be of press conference, and then that undercard, which is unveiled 5v5, one versus match, Queensbury versus match, and one versus Hearn. The fights that we have on it, have you ever in your years of boxing, probably definitely haven't because it's the first that's ever been done, but could you imagine when you first started your boxing journalistic career that you would witness something that we witnessed? yesterday with the unmasking of fighters and two promoters going head to head in the 5v5 did you ever envision that when you were coming through i mean i can't say i thought of that exact scenario but it's it didn't it's to me it's not about that part of the event i mean the promoters against uh, each other and, and the, the masks and the whole thing that was sort of showbiz uh, what i saw was more than all that bells and whistles was five great fights mm-hmm. five really mm-hmm. intriguing and i'm not even forget that you know the main event is its own thing with uh, Arthur Better be up against Dimitri Bebo for the undisputed light heavyweight title. That's one of the best fights, if not the best fight you can make in boxing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And now you take these other matchups that are all interesting, that all have, in my mind, a way for either guy to win the fight, that all shape up on paper in terms of the action to be entertaining inside the ring. Um, that, to me, was what was more attractive than the, you know, the, the showbiz part about they're taking their masks off and, you know, Eddie and Frank uh, talking about their, their rivalry and everything. Listen, first of all, I'm very happy that Frank and Eddie can work together because they both have quality stables uh, and we as fans should get the opportunity to see them fight uh, fighters besides just the guys that are in the same promotional company. So from that standpoint, and they credited, uh, you know, his excellency, uh, Turkey al Sheikh from Saudi Arabia for basically getting them in a room. I think Eddie Hearn is the one that said, you know, slapping up a side, slapping us upside the head said, what are you guys doing? Why don't you want to make the biggest fights? And so, you know, whatever, whatever the lasting legacy of the Saudi Arabian boxing experiment is going to be and, and Turkey Al Sheikh's place in that uh, one thing you can't argue about or be negative about is however, whether it's just the the pure amount of money or his, uh, his ability to talk guys into things. The bottom line is he's gotten these people who have never worked together for, as they were talking about 14, 15 years. And now they're meeting every day and talking every day and making the biggest fights in boxing together. Somebody had to get in there and do that. And whether it was, like I said, a force of personality and the money or whatever, it's happening. So, yeah, I mean, I can't say I'm shocked by that because the money is going to talk. But the matchups they made, I mean, I've, like you said, I've been watching boxing a long time. Since the beginning of the pay-per-view age, let's call it like the early 1990s, late 1980s. This, to me, if you, besides the, the, the tremendous number of stacked, and I mean stacked, Don King pay-per-views that he did with Showtime in like the 90s, well, mainly when Mike Tyson was away in prison. This might this is the best card on paper in terms of the depth and interest to me since those days in the late 90s. And there's been a lot of good pay-per-view cards over the years, obviously. But fight by fight by fight by fight, nothing has come close to this, in my opinion. Because like I said, the main event is one of the best fights, if not the best fight in boxing. And then every other fight on the show I am interested in. Jang against Deontay Wilder, very fascinating, very meaningful, you know, uh, important heavyweight fight. The other fight in the heavyweight division with Hergovich against Dubois, which is going to have added stakes. They didn't announce that yesterday because you have to wait to see what happens on uh, May 18th. But post Fury versus Usyk, the fight between Hergovich and Dubois is going to be for the vacant IBF title. And then you have the other fights on there also. Ray Ford against, uh, you know, he just had a spectacular performance and a very dramatic title win to get his featherweight title matching up uh, uh, in, in the 
with Nick Ball, who's looked very good in his recent fights. You know, a heartbreaking draw he had against Vargas. Could have been a unification fight. That's a heck of a fight. And then the other fights on there are very interesting, too. you got a great middleweight fight with the two best young guys in the division, in uh, Shiraz and, uh, and Ammo Williams. And even, like, the, the older veteran in uh, Craig Richards against the younger light heavyweight uh, Willie Hutchinson. We'll see what happens there. You know, and I don't mean that's a bad fight, but if you look at that and think that's, like, the quote-unquote worst fight on the card, and I don't mean it's a bad fight, that tells you what a stacked card is. If that's, like, the weakest of all the fights, and that's still a pretty good fight. I love the card. Up, me too. And fingers crossed I can be out there for it because as a boxing fan, not just as a, a talking head and a boxing journalist, if that's what you want to call me, I would love to be out there for that, for that. Just to be ringside and to watch all these great matchups, especially Berta B. Evan Bivol. Like for the purest boxing fan, the casual boxing fan might know who Berta B. Evan Bivol are because they don't have that sort of Instagram following and whatnot that Ryan Garcia and David Haney have. But as a pure boxing fan, that is just boxing for me that is just an absolute you know, you know, you know, the beautiful part about it is andrew the beautiful part about it is i mean no offense to the instagram folks and the casuals i don't give a shit about the casuals i'm not a casual i'm a diehard i'm a, I'm a lifer so i couldn't care less i mean i hope they watch because it's good for the sport and it's obviously good for business but if they don't watch i don't care I couldn't care less just bring me the biggest fights and the best fights and the fact that you have dimitri bivol and arthur better bf who have both held light heavyweight titles since 2017, and we're finally getting around to them fighting each other for Undisputed. It's about fucking time. Best bump, Dan. That was, <laughs> I like that, mate. That's perfect. Um, we've seen that Eddie Hearn and, and um, Warren work together. Now, when you look at the American market, the American market has got way more fighters than, than the UK and Europe have. Yeah, you've got two great promoters, three great promo promoters, if you include PBC, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, top rank. Can we see that? Can we see those guys, those promoters? If Saudi was to come over to the US, if His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh was to say to Oscar, Bob Arum, or PBC and say, listen, I want you to work together, 5v5. Um, can you, could you imagine that, Dan? Because like I said to you, the fighters that are in America right now, there's, there's way more than what we've got in the UK and you could make, you can have a little bit of fun with it. With it. Yeah, I mean, also, I, first of all, Bob Arum has been working with uh, with the Saudis because he's involved with Tyson Fury. He's in, he's the promoter of Better Bia. They've had fighters on on those cards, and they've had uh, a relationship there. Uh, so yeah, I could see that uh, in terms of Arum being involved. Um, and Oscar and the Golden Boy people, I've always given them credit. They've always you know for many years their mantra has been let's match the best against the best. They have not been fearful to make the top fights. Sometimes to their own fighters' detriment, they just you know they're willing to make the matches. I mean, they're doing it right now with Haney and Garcia. They know their guy's the underdog, uh, but they're making the fight because it's you know it's a big fight. So I don't think there'd be any problem with that. And frankly, Golden Boy and Top Rank, well, at one point were the bitterest of bitter enemies. Uh, in recent years, that is long gone, and they've you know not on a daily basis, but they've had plenty of fights where they've had guys on each other's cards or made deals or avoided first bids and that sort of thing. So, you know, if the Saudis got involved and it was a matter of offering money, I I think they would do that in a heartbeat. And, and find a way to work that out. Now, there's still the issues with broadcasting because Top Rank is exclusive to ESPN in the United States, not to the zone, which is uh, an interesting factor when you look at the, the June 1st card. In the United States, I mean, it's the zone around the world. Uh, some places it'll be pay-per-view. I guess some places it won't be. And I guess in the UK, it'll be on a TNT uh, sports box office. But in America, it's a real weird situation. They're going to have the main event with Better Be Than Bebo as a one-fight show on ESPN+. Plus for non-pay-per-view, just regular subscription fight, but only the main event. If you live in America and you want to watch the rest of the card, which is the five versus five, it's going to cost you pay-per-view on his own pay-per-view. So it's kind of messed up because it's two outlets. One's pay-per-view, one's not. It's going to be very confusing, I think, to a lot of people. So that's a little bit of a mess. But in terms of making the matches, yeah, I think they can do that. Now, PBC, look, they do their thing. They, they will work with a promoter here and there, but they've never really truly embraced, at least on a regular basis, of making these types of fights with other promoters unless they're uh, in charge of things. But if the money was there, I can't imagine they wouldn't. Why wouldn't they? If everybody can make money and it's the right fight for their fighter and for their company, absolutely. I think it's a, the zone in the UK and TNT. It, it, we've split it the last... We've split it. So the last Joshua and Ghanu was split. And I think uh, Tyson Fury and Ghanu was split between but the two. Here, here, this one won't be split. If yeah. you want to watch the B-Bowl, better be a, 
it's only on plus exclusively mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. want to watch the other fights on the card it's only on the zone exclusively that's why it's a little bit of a weird thing yeah, One yeah. Card, two different outlets well, listen, like I said to you, boxing, it seems like every week something pops up in this beautiful sport we call boxing, the sweet science. Uh, and there's always so much to talk about. And we've got a great fight this weekend in Ryan Garcia and, and Devin Haney. Uh, the rivalry between the two of them is going to be great. We've got three minutes left on this call. Dan, I just want you to sort of like sell the fight to me, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. I know it's three all games. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a promoter. I don't make any extra money on it, so I'm not gonna. Prom- I'm not gonna sell the fight. If you want to watch the fight, buy the fucking fight. <laughs> Brilliant, man. I love that. Excellent, Dan. Or if you want to get somebody to sell the fight, talk to Oscar, talk to his team, talk to Ryan, talk to Haney. I don't gotta sell the fight. Brilliant, man. I love that. They want to. They want to pay me. I'll help sell the fight. <laughs> Listen, get Dan Raphael on the pay books. Let's get him to sell the fight because he's got a way of words, and I'm sure you can sell the fight. You, you like you like the American Eddie Hearn, Dan? I'm not sure. I, I like that comparison. <laughs> You're better looking anyway, Dan. Right, Dan. Uh, listen, I appreciate your time as always, my friend. And uh, yeah, until the next one, enjoy the fights this weekend. And uh, hopefully I'll speak to you soon. All right, Andrew. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.